Ladies and gentlemen, it's finally time for the playoff episode, but we're actually going to start with one more regular season game, as this is the SEC Championship, 11-0 Georgia versus 11-0 Bama. Whoever wins this game not only goes undefeated, not only wins the SEC, but will also secure the number one seed for their side of the bracket. They are going to be on the same side, so there's a chance that they could play again, but this game holds all the marbles, man. Whoever gets this game not only gets that first round bye, but like I said, does secure that SEC Championship, so Georgia wants to come out here and win. They're already across the 50-yard line, but here on this third and 11, Nate's going to get sacked, and that's going to set the tone for this game, man. This this was a tough game. This was a defensive game on both sides. As you see, Georgia got a stop right back. Now they're going to give it to Camden. Camden picks up only about a gain of three. The run game was pretty contained for the first half. Nate's dropping back to throw. He's able to hit Oscar up to pick up the first down. First and 10, they give it to Camden again, and there he goes, man. He's able to pick up about 13 yards, and they're going to give it to him again. As you guys know, if Camden gets going, it's trouble for any team. Here he's going to pick up about another gain of six, and on a third and four after they tried to give it to him again for no gain, Nate tries to hit Ra Ra Thomas, but the defender makes an excellent play, and they're going to have to punt again. It's still zero to three, though, as Georgia got another stop again. So it's just stop after stop. Who's going to be able to get that first seven on the board? That's going to be a big indicator of who can potentially win this game. As Camden gets another rush for about 15 yards, he's averaging about five yards a carry. They're just waiting for him to explode that big run. And then here off the play action, they're able to hit Jack Zink. They catch the defense staring at Camden, and they get a walk-in touchdown to go ahead and strike first against Alabama. Now and with another stop on defense, they have a chance to double dip, go up two possessions here. Camden's going to hit a spin move to pick up about seven yards on the carry. Then on the third and three, since that was second down, Nate's dropping back. He's looking to convert this first down. He finds Oscar Dope wide open in the flat. He's going to lower his shoulder to pick up a few extra yards. That gives him another first and 10. And they're going to give it back to Camden. Camden's actually starting to work now. He goes ahead and picks up about another gain of 12. They're going to give it to him again. And just like that, man, picks up another gain of about 30 yards after breaking a tackle and making a man miss. 13 rushes for 88 yards already. Nate throws a chest ball to Dominic Lovett. He makes a tough catch between two defenders. And here they give it to Camden again. He's going to be stopped just short to make that third and one. But guess who gets the ball on third and one, man? Everyone in the stadium knew where it was going. And he still picked up about eight yards. Already over the 100 yard mark in the first half they're gonna go ahead and give it to him again on second and goal trying to just fall into the end zone third and goal they give it to Camden again and it's just nothing doing so they're gonna have to take three Bama does finally go and score so it's 10 to 9 Georgia's still up one it's the middle of the third quarter they're trying to go ahead and get this go ahead touchdown right here to extend the lead even more off the play action Nate hits Jack Saint. pressure in his face man he's unfazed he makes a perfect throw and just like that they're already across the 20 yard line looking to score again try to go up at least eight points here as they give it to Camden for a gain of nine and on second and one. They go with the play action. Nate's rolling to his left. He's looking. He throws it to the back of the end zone, and he finds Oscar Delp wide open to go ahead and take this lead, man. Pending the extra point, they will be up 8, 17 to 9. They got it. So with 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter, this could be it. And Nate throws a terrible interception on a third down. That could have been the drive to put the game away. But instead, not only is Bama going to get the interception, but they're going to go ahead and score as well. So it's a tie game, 8 minutes left. Now we have to see what Nate is made of. This game determines who the SEC champion is, as well as who gets that first seed. So if Nate is going to lock in. It's going to have to be right now, man. Seven minutes remaining in the game. They give it to Camden. Nate's dropping back to throw on a second and six. They hit Camden again, but he can't hold on to the ball. So on this key third and six, they need this first down. And Nate almost throws another interception, being hurried by the pressure. And Bama goes and takes the lead. So now Nate's playing from behind with only two minutes left. They've had the lead for most of the game. And look at Camden Park, man. Makes a catch, breaks the tackle, makes a man miss. And of course, no one's going to catch him with that track speed. As Camden Park went ahead and tied up the game in one play, they thought that they had a two-minute drill. They got Got it in two seconds, man. One play. Camden Park takes it 75 yards all the way to the house. Georgia has a ball game, man. Who's going to come out on top? It's overtime now. 24 apiece. Georgia was able to get that final stop. Who's going to be able to come out on top, man? Overtime game. They hit Camden Park again in the sideline. It's going to make it a third and six. This is the most important play all season so far. Nate's dropping back to throw. He's looking. He doesn't see anything, and he throws an inaccurate, trying to hit Dominic Levitt over the middle, so they're actually going to have to punt, and of course, Alabama's going to go ahead and get six. Jalen Milrow led them all the way down the field so Georgia's first loss of the season comes in the SEC championship and as we take a look at these brackets undefeated Alabama undefeated Colorado Georgia lost one game LSU lost one game Florida State lost two and you see Ole Miss barely scrapes their way into the playoff man we have some tough playoff games let's go ahead and get it started with Noah first as he has undefeated Colorado who's the better number two man him versus Shador they have Travis Hunter now like a 99 overall this team has developed from last season and now they're one of the best teams in the nation but Noah does doesn't care about none of that as you see first play from scrimmage down 7-0 75 yards all the way to the crib y'all remember playoff Noah from last season well he's back and he just took his first play 75 yards to the crib as he spikes the ball down man it's that time it's that playoff time man let's go they're gonna give it to Judkins to pick up about a gain of five then on a third and four Noah's looking he's able to hit 
Payton to pick up yet another first down. They're down seven points, man. They go ahead and give it to Judkins again. Run game is looking good as they pick up another gain of nine. Then on second and one, they try to go with the speed option, and Noah throws a lazy pitch, and it's actually going to hit the defender, and Colorado's going to recover. It seems like whenever Noah starts to get something going, he gets in his own way, but thankfully his defense was able to get a stop, so it doesn't really matter. Here he gets hit in the face and is still able to hit Trey Harris on the slant to pick up about 30 yards, and more importantly, to pick up the first down as this drive continues, they give it to Judkins. He picks up another gain of about 15, as Ole Miss's O-line is just dominating Colorado's front seven right now. It looks like they're getting at least five yards of carry. Here on the read option, it could have been a lot more, but we get a holding call, so here they're going to go ahead and run it again, but to the other side, Noah's going to try to outrun Shiloh. It's not going to work, but he's going to pick up at least 16 yards to make it a second and short. Then on second and four, he's dropping back. He's looking to throw. He sees Caden wide open in the flat. He's going to hit him. Caden's going to run for some extra yards to go ahead and pick up that first down on this impressive drive, man. Now Ole Miss is in the red zone. Noah's dropping back to throw. He's going to try to hit Caden again, but it's a tough catch. He's not going to be able to hold on to it. Second and 10, Noah's dropping back again. He doesn't see anything, so he's just going to scramble. He picks up about nine yards. On a third and one, he's dropping back. They need this first down. He's able to hit Aiden Williams on the tough return route to go ahead and pick up the first down. Then on second and seven, after I run to Judkins, Noah's looking to throw. He's able to hit Caden, but he's not able to hold on to the ball as Jay makes a great play. Then on a third and seven, they need this, and they get bulldozed. The left guard just got straight ran over, so Ole Miss is going to have to kick three, but their defense gets another stop, so they're still in this game. They have 30 seconds left until half, and they get ball, so if Noah can pull off some magic, they can go into the half in some great shape. Here he gets sacked, so third and eight, this is their last chance to keep the drive alive. He's scrambling. He's looking. He hits Judkins, and not only does he hit him, but Judkins is able to pick up the first down and get out of bounds. 17 seconds, two timeouts left. He's able to hit Caden to get across the 50. They burn another timeout. Noah's dropping back yet again. 10 seconds left. He sees Aiden Williams. He makes a perfect throw to get them inside the 20 to secure them three points, and they get the ball back. So here on the read option at the start of the third quarter, Noah's picking up right where he left off. He goes ahead and picks up about 30 yards, five rushes, 121 yards, man. This is playoff Noah in full effect. He's dropping back. He's looking to throw. He makes a tough throw to Aiden Williams, pick up about seven yards, and on second and three, they go with the play action. He tries to get rid of it, but their left tackle got jailbroke. He did not secure the edge for the boot. So on a third and 15, they desperately need this first down. He's able to hit Aiden Williams again to keep the drive alive, man. 10 for 12. We haven't seen Noah throwing like this since last season, to be completely honest. Here, he's able to hit Jordan Watkins wide open to get them all the way back into the red zone already, man. There was a run to Judkins for no gain on first down. So on second and 10, Noah just goes ahead and dips it off to him again. He's able to make a man miss and pick up about five, six yards to go ahead and make it a third and manageable. Then on third and five, Noah's dropping back. They desperately need this. He finds Caden beating his man on the drag route. He's able to fall forward to make it a first and goal from the one yard line. First and goal, they go ahead and give it to Judkins and he's going to walk into the end zone untouched to give Ole Miss their first lead of this game. They desperately needed this. If they can get another stop, they'd be in great shape. But if not, man, Noah has been playing superb so far. Their O-line has been playing pretty good. And speaking of pretty good O-line play, Judkins is going to make one move and take this zone all the way to the crib. 75 yard rushing touchdown, man. First play out for that drive. Ole Miss goes up two possessions with this big touchdown from Judkins. And not only do they get that touchdown, but they also get another stop. So up 10, if they score here, they can pretty much ice this game with only nine minutes left. There's not going to be enough drives to go around. Judkins makes another big play to pick up the first down. Noah still only has two incomplete passes. He's cooking right now. Second and seven, they go ahead and throw a bubble screen to Trey Harris. He's able to pick up the first down and a lot more than on a first and 10. They go with the read option. Noah's going to get to the outside. He's looking for a block. He gets the block and not only does he get the block, but he makes another man miss to pick up about another 15 yards on the scramble, 140 yards on the ground. Another second and seven after running Judkins. Noah's dropping back. He's trying to get out. He just goes ahead and throws the ball away so he doesn't take a sack because this third and seven is important. He's looking to throw. Caden's wide open and he overthrows him and that's the Noah Nash we've been used to this season unfortunately. Colorado went and got three so now it's only a one score game. This drive is more important than ever. They have about four minutes left. If they can either clock them or go ahead and win this game right here man that would be big as they advance on to the next round. Second and three they try to give it to Caden. He breaks a tackle and falls forward to go ahead and pick up just enough for the first down. Third and 15 man game on the line. Noah makes a perfect throw pressure in his face to Jordan Watkins. Perfect over the middle that gets them in the field goal range and not only that but Colorado only has one timeout left they're gonna burn it here and remember there's no two minute warning so one more first down will end this game and as you see Noah goes ahead and takes it himself after his great rushing performance man they're gonna take this last knee they walked into Colorado's home and beat a 12 and 0 team to go ahead and advance on to the next round they do have undefeated Alabama next but now let's see if Nate can go ahead and win his first round matchup against a good Oklahoma team they were middle of the pack they weren't the best seed but this is a good team and they can't take them lightly and as you see Camden's not going to very first play 48 yards man Camden is already locked in they follow up that big run with a play action on first and 10 Nate's dropping back to throw he's able to find Ra Ra Thomas to go ahead and pick up another first down they're already knocking on the door to the red zone here they do get stopped for a loss of four yards though so on a second and 14 Nate's trying to make up for it and Ra Ra Thomas and him have some sort of miscommunication it said it was an accurate ball but as you see it was not they're gonna go ahead and throw an interception on their first drive OU already has six points so they can't 
get too far behind. Here he hits Rara Thomas again to pick up another first down to get them across the 40. Now he's dropping back on a second and 10 after a gain of no yards on the run. He's looking. He's able to hit Jack Saint on a tough throw. That was really scary. But you guys know Nate is a gunslinger, man. So he's going to try to fit it into those tight windows. Fourth and two early on. Coach tells them to go for it. This is a playoff game. And they make another great deflection as this Oklahoma defense has been on one all game long so far at the start of this first half. Five minutes left in the second quarter and Georgia still has no points. We're not used to seeing that this season. But Camden Park is still doing his thing. Averaging over 10 yards per carry with only six rushes right now. They're going to give it to him again. He's going to pick up another first down. Juke to the outside. And here we go, man. Camden's going to go ahead and take this all the way to the crib to finally get that scoring drought off the board. 7-6 now. Georgia is up. We have seen Camden Park be a game changer all season long. And it's not going to change in the playoffs, man. As they're just feeding him so far. The passing game has not been working very well for Georgia. They're going to try to get it going on this play action. Nate makes a perfect throw to Ra Ra Thomas right on the cut. As you see, 4 for 9. Nate's not playing the best, but he's trying to find his groove right here. He throws a lob pass to Ra Ra. Perfect over the shoulder ball touchdown, man. There's the groove that Nate was looking for. You guys know if Nate and Camden can both get going, it's a scary sight for anybody in the league. And their defense is clicking as they've only allowed 6 points so far. So here with 40 seconds left until half, Nate trying to go ahead and secure some points because if they score here, they go up 2 possessions, but they also get the ball at half. So if they can go ahead and get some points here, that'll be huge. It's a 4th and 3, but they're in no man's land. Can't kick the field goal, but too deep to punt it. So here with 28 seconds left, they're going to hit Oscar Delp wide open, and he's going to go ahead and get out of bounds. So with 25 seconds left, they're guaranteed three, but they can take a few shots at the end zone, and Oscar Delp is going to be his man wide open the very next play to go ahead and give us a two-touchdown lead over Oklahoma, man. But unfortunately, as you see, we're going to skip to the end of the third quarter. Georgia hasn't been able to do anything this whole quarter, as well as Oklahoma got another touchdown. But here, that's going to open it up as Jack Saint gets a slant. He's going to take this all the way to the house. No one's going to catch him, and Georgia's going to get that two-touchdown lead back to go ahead and start the fourth quarter. That was a big play. Their offense was stagnant all third quarter. Those were their first points, and it comes off of a huge play from Jack Saint, and their defense got another stop. So at the start of this fourth quarter, if Nate can go ahead and lock in and get another touchdown drive together, down three scores with less than six minutes left, I don't think Oklahoma will have enough to come back. Here he's going to hit Ra Ra Thomas to get them inside the red zone. He breaks the tackle, gets them to the 20-yard line, man, to pick up another first down. Then on second and 18 after a sack, Nate's dropping back to throw. He's looking. He's able to hit his boy Ra Ra Thomas yet again to get them to third and inches. And on third and inches, you know where the ball is going. They try to give it to him again on second and goal. And then the next play on third and goal, someone actually fumbles the ball. So Georgia gets no points and Oklahoma goes and scores. So now it's a one score game with three minutes left. Nate, can you go ahead and clutch this out? Perfect ball to Ra Ra Thomas to go ahead and pick up a first down. Then on second and nine after a run to Camden, Nate's dropping back. He has to go ahead and throw the ball away as there was pressure in his face. Third and nine, they get bull rush and sack. So they're going to have to punt and watch Oklahoma, but their defense actually actually gets the stop. So they're going to be moving on to the next round, man. They have Florida State, the same team that eliminated them last year. Nate has a chip on his shoulder. He wants this game back badly. They're going to be prepping for that, but we have to go see if Noah can be undefeated Alabama at Alabama as they're already down 0-7 to with about four minutes left in the first quarter. He's able to hit Jordan Watkins to pick up a big game. He makes a man miss and gets them all the way down inside the 20-yard line, man. First play from scrimmage for that offense goes for 53 yards. Noah's dropping back again. He had a wide open touchdown, but he misses it. Noah's not going to be able to miss those throws if he wants to go ahead and win this game and potentially maybe play his brother in the semifinal depending on if he wins this and also if Nate can beat Florida State and if Noah can keep making on the run throws with pressure in his face like that for touchdowns I think that they can win this game here they get a touchdown against Alabama but Alabama is going to score again so they're down seven here they're going to get the read option going you know what time it is when Noah gets that ball on the read option he's going to juke to the outside make a man miss and you guys know no one's going to catch Noah when he gets into the open field so one play they already have the game tied up again playoff Noah is back in full effect man 14-14 against Alabama. Noah's not going away without a fight. He doesn't care that they were 7-5 and five and Alabama was 12-0. and 0. You guys know when Noah plays the best teams, he shows his best. Here, they're going to hit Caden for another first down. They're down six as Alabama scored again. And right as I start talking good about Noah, man, he shows us exactly why they went 7-5. and five. He can make some throws, but then he'll just completely miss a right open receiver. Here on third and 10, he throws up a prayer and Jordan Watkins is able to come down with the catch, get them across the 40-yard line, man. They're right outside of the red zone. Noah's dropping back to throw on a first and 10 and is able to find Aiden Williams wide open to get them inside the 10-yard line on a corner route. Bam is going to use their first timeout with only a minute left in the half. Noah's going to get the read option to pick up some more yards. They're going to go ahead and give it to Judkins. He's going to fall into the end zone to go ahead and take the lead by one point. 21 to 20 start of the second half, or at least that's what we thought as Bama went down and got through with only one minute left. So second and 14 here, they throw a screen pass to Judkins to start the third quarter. He's able to pick up about 11 yards to make it a third and short. Third and three. Noah's looking. He needs this first down and he throws a terrible interception. He got baited by the curl flat read. The safety started in the hard flat and he just backed up right into the curl. Bama went and got a touchdown as well. So now Ole Miss is down nine points, two whole possessions. Here they're going to pick up a key third down to keep the drive alive. And two plays later on another third and seven. Noah's dropping back. He's going to throw up a ball to Jordan Watkins. He's going to make an amazing catch to get them back in the red zone. They need to score here to go ahead and cut down this lead. Noah's dropping back 
on a first and 10. He's able to hit Aiden Williams. He makes a terrific catch to get them to the one yard line. First and goal, Ole Miss. And they're going to go ahead and give it to Quinchon. He's going to lower his shoulder and fall into the end zone, man. Ole Miss is down one possession. They could really use a defensive stop right here, which they're going to go ahead and get. So now Ole Miss is only down two points in the third quarter. They're going to start off with the read option. Noah Jukes to the outside and is able to pick up some big yards, man. Four rushes for 111 yards. Noah's feet have been cooking all playoffs long. He's dropping back on the second and seven. He's able to hit Trey Harris to pick up yet another first down. They're knocking on the door yet again to go ahead and take this lead. Already in field goal range. If they can get seven and take a big lead, that would be huge right here. Is on second and five. They're going to go another read option. Noah's going to make a man miss and break a tackle and get back to the outside to get them all the way down inside the 10-yard line. First and goal yet again. Five rushes, 132, man. Noah is in full playoff mode. First and goal, they're going to give it to Judkins. He's going to break a tackle and walk into the end zone as Ole Miss takes their first lead of this game. Let's see if they can hold on to it. They're not going to be able to as Bama's going to go ahead and score yet again. Down three points with seven minutes left. Noah Nash, what are you made of? Undefeated SEC champion Alabama versus a 7-5 and five last seed Ole Miss, man. Can you continue the Cinderella story as he's going to hit Aiden Williams to get them across the 50-yard line. And on second and 11, after a loss of one on the run, he's going to hit Caden wide open in the flat for a drag route to pick up yet another first down. First and 10, they're going to give it to Judkins. He's going to pick up about a gain of seven. Then on a second and three, they're going to go with the read option, but they're going to go ahead and give it again and pick up yet another first down inside the red zone. Noah, can you finish this drive? Three minutes left. He's dropping back to throw. He's able to hit Trey Harris to pick up yet another gain of nine. Then on the third and inches, Noah's just going to go ahead and fall for pick it up himself on the QB sneak. First and 10, they're going to give it to Judkins on the outside zone. He picks up about a gain of two. Second and eight, they go with the toss to Judkins. He tries to make something happen, but nothing's doing. Alabama's defense is stout. Third and eight, Noah's dropping back to throw, and he finds Jordan Watkins to go ahead and get them a first and goal with only a minute left, man. If they can go ahead and score this touchdown, they're just going to need to pray with their defense. Judkins is going to go ahead and walk into the end zone for yet another touchdown, man. That should be the game winner. Hopefully, their defense can hold out. As pending the extra point, they'll be up four. Bama needs to get seven and 52 seconds, and as you see, they don't. Ole Miss's defense gets the stop. Noah beat undefeated Colorado, then walked into Bama's house and beat an undefeated team as well, so he's sitting pretty waiting for the conference championship. Now we need to see who it's going to be, Nate, his brother, or is it going to be Jordan Travis yet again? As last season, Jordan ended Nate's season. This here exact round, same exact game last year, but they didn't have Camden Park, so hopefully he can make a difference, and he's already making one right here, as he's going to go ahead and get a rush for about 30 yards. Here they're going to hit Ra Ra Thomas, pick up yet another first down. This Georgia offense is moving down the field at the speed of light. Nate's dropping back to throw. He hits Ra Ra Thomas again on a third and six to go ahead and make it a first and goal. Nate's dropping back again. He's able to hit Oscar Delp to pick up a few yards. And on a third and goal, they need this touchdown. Nate's dropping back. He's looking. He's able to hit Ra Ra Thomas on the out route. He makes a perfect catch. Georgia strikes first, man. I'm feeling this is going to be a shootout because last year it was. And as you see, Florida State's already going to match here. Nate's going to go ahead and make a throw to Jack Stane. And Jack Stane's going to take it all the way. Shootout in progress, man. They're going to take this all the way to the house. 75 yards. Now to run into the end zone, young man. 14 to 7, man. Georgia is locked in. They really want to get that old Miss rematch yet again. Could you guys imagine Noah versus Nate in the conference championship? Winner goes to the national title, man. Here they're going to give it to Camden Park to pick up about a gain of nine. Then he's going to go ahead and get the first down the very next play. They're going to give it to him a third time in a row. He's going to pick up yet another first down as they're going to ride the back of Camden Park for as long as he's running, man. And he's going to be running for a long time as he has been all season. They're going to hit Rara Thomas, pick up another first down. Nate is currently eight for nine right now. I repeat, eight for nine. Make that nine for 10 as he hits Jack Saint while getting hit in the back to go ahead and pick up yet another first down. They're going to give it to Camden Park and he's able to run through traffic to turn a gain of nothing to a gain of eight. Then here they're going to go with the play action. They're going to hit him again. He's going to pick up a first down to get them back inside the 10 yard line, man. First and goal. Everybody is cooking right now. Everybody is feeling it. Nate's dropping back to throw. He's looking. He hits Dominic Lovick on a dangerous pass, but he's able to make the catch. Second and goal. There was nothing doing. So on third and goal, they give it to Camden. He's going to get into the end zone to give them yet another touchdown. 21 to 14. But something tells me this is not going to be the end. As you see, 21 to 21, man. Florida's firing on all cylinders as well. Nate's going to hit Oscar Dub to pick up a first down. They have about 30 seconds left until half. Let's see what Nate can do if he can make some magic happen. He's going to hit Oscar Delp yet again to already get them inside a field goal range. They have 30 seconds and one timeout, so Nate's dropping back to throw yet again. He's looking. He's going to hit Oscar Delp for the third time in a row. Oscar is just carrying this drive right now as they're going to burn their final timeout, but they want to take a few shots to the end zone. Nate's dropping back. He's going to hit Oscar Delp again the fourth time, four catches in a row. Oscar Delp took them all the way down the field. Perfect throws from Nate. They're going to take the lead going into the half, and they get the ball back, so this is their chance to go ahead and finally pull away from Florida State. Camden Park on a third nine is going to fight for the first down. 
He's doing it on the ground and through the air, man, just making plays. Here they're going to hit Jack Saint to pick up another first down on a second and six. Second and five, they go with the play action. Nate's dropping back, looking to throw. Rara Thomas is wide open in the corner route. He's going to juke to the outside and get them inside the five-yard line for yet another first and goal. This is their chance to go ahead and go up two scores. Nate's dropping back to throw. He's looking. He's going to get sacked, actually, to make it a third and goal. Then on third and goal, he's looking for the end zone. He's going to go ahead and hit Rara Thomas, but he drops the ball right in his hands. So Georgia's going to have to go ahead and take three, but they get a stop. So they're up 10 with the ball again. And look who it is, Oscar Dope again. He's really been filling that Brock Bowers role ever since he went to the league. Here, Nate's going to miss a wide open slant to Rara Thomas on a first down. Then here on third and 12, Nate's going to get hit as he throws, and it's going to force it to be inaccurate. They're going to have to punt, but they end up actually getting a pick six on defense. Florida does score the next drive, but they're still up 10 with five minutes left. So this is the put away right here. If they can just take time off the clock and get three or even seven, that will basically be the game, man. As Florida's just not going to have enough time to catch up. They're hitting Oscar Delp yet again, man. This has been Oscar Delp's show right here. Camden Park is going to go ahead and run for some extra yards. And Nate's dropping back to throw on a third and six. They need this first down. He's going to hit Sperlin. A little short of the marker, but he's going to go ahead and fight for the first down, man. And after a run for about two yards, he's going to give it to Camden again on the stretch. He picks up some amazing blocks, and he's going to walk into the end zone untouched to go ahead and put an exclamation point on this playoff game with that touchdown. The matchup is sealed, man. Noah versus Nate, part three. Noah's 1-1, one, one, Nate's 1-1, one, one, but they've never played in the playoffs. And this time, the winner of the game goes on to the College Football National Championship.